Today we are meeting Aurora Hartsmith uh, from South Africa and we'll be talking about my lab, super soldiers and this kind of stuff. Hello Aurora. Hello Alex. Uh, let's begin uh, uh, from the history, from your history. Uh, so uh, how uh, was it, how it happened that you were involved in this project and uh, how come uh, that you learned about this? Because uh, first you, you was not uh, aware of that. So what is your history, actually? Okay, um, first of all, thank you for having me on um, your show. I appreciate your time. Okay. And uh, well, in the history of what has happened with me is uh, I used to have dreams when I was little um, of being involved in military experiences, experiments. I didn't know it was experiments then at the time. Um, I then also started going into a bit more information with regards to it, uh, researching it up. And then I realized it was actually, uh, it's actually a project. It was a project with uh, involving youngsters when they were very gifted at the time. Um, my experience as I grew older um, became more involved in terms of visiting uh, planets, going out with other groups of youngsters. I could never really... Um, I didn't really know them, but I do know that I had that there was a familiarity with the people. Uh, personally, I always feel felt at the time that so they somehow um, tried to keep me under a state of to be subdued, and I always fought against it. I also believe that my um, family were involved in it as well, so. To keep me in that, um, you know, cycle, that that controlled cycle. Uh, a very good friend of mine um, told me that I, well, he was there for me to explain more about what I went through, and that's how I got to know about, uh, um, you know, the my lab experience later and the super soldier experience first. And, um, so basically, the one was before the other. So maybe uh, explain what is MyLab? Uh, MyLab is when you're actually abducted by humans as opposed to extraterrestrials. You're led to believe that you're abducted by extraterrestrials. Um, it's very difficult at the time to differentiate between the two because you're in such a state of fear uh, and you're paralyzed so you can't really respond out of your own um, will. Your will is basically um, blocked. Yeah, yeah so that, yeah. Um, they triggered uh, your heart energy specifically. Um, and it's almost, you know, you've had such a big fright where you, you feel ice cold inside of your heart. That sense of feeling, that's what I can explain. That's how it was initially. Um, in my 20s, I basically uh, started becoming more aware of the fact that I could somehow block or fight against it um, by just working constantly on my heart energy to, uh, you know, to minimize the experience. Um, they have been, well, let me put it this way. My experience where I actually saw my lab, my lab abduction taking place was really where I heard an accent slip through, uh, a human accent. So that made me wonder what the hell, you know, what's, what's going on. And uh, I then recognized in South Africa, South African accent, which was quite bizarre at the time because I was always under the impression that it didn't happen in South Africa. There's not, you know, there's not really a lot of information about South Africa. Uh, 
Well, yeah. So um, very strong Afrikaans accent that came through. Um, we were taken to uh, Pretoria Underground base. I know that it for a fact because I had had dreams afterwards to confirm that it was there. Uh, I heard Afrikaans speaking people there as well. Um, I seemed to be more alert than they were. So again, uh, I'm just, I guess, very uh, protected so that I could, you know, establish, uh, you know, to, to spread the information about this um, to, to people in South Africa specifically. They were basically all multiracial, multinational. There were, I know, there were, there was a, a, a Chinese man, he was an over, uh, uh, a Chinese man, he was part of some uh, Chinese mafia, uh, a middle aged man. He had, he has a wife and child. Uh, there was a, a German, there were German people, there were, uh, male and female, old and young. So um, there wasn't just specifically having youngsters, but they were all kinds of ages, you know what I'm saying? So um, there was also American and Russian. I could re I could re uh, recognize the accents, uh, and most of them were not aware that they were even there, you know. So um, some of my friends were there as well, uh, and I discussed it with them when I was awake, you know. So that was quite a, a big thing that made me worry, you know. This needed to be investigated in this country specifically. Okay, uh, so maybe uh, from the beginning, uh, someone, uh, how are people taken to this project from... Childhood, early childhood. Yeah, yeah. With, with what's happened to, yeah. with what's happened to me was it was myself as a as a baby child, little one, um, and then my I have siblings, my sister and brother as well. They were also very little, and then they would take you by hijacking your dreams. You'd have a dream. And then your dream would just change into another sequence of dream events as you feel as if you're experiencing another dream. First of all, that's how I remembered it as dreams. Then later, as we got, grew, got older, um, I could actually experience where they would, I would pick up on them before they would even come. I would feel there's going to be an interference uh, specifically my lab, uh, human abduction, human-based abduction. Um, with extraterrestrial, not so, I can't pick it up so clearly. They seem to be more under, under the radar than the humans, uh, the military. Um, also, again, the dream would be the, you would be dreaming a, a, a normal sort of dream and then you'll, you'll have a different scene. I once forced myself to wake up, but I couldn't wake up, but I was in control of my dream. It's as if it became a lucid dream state then. I woke up straight after and this specific abduction and I could smell uh, the smell of some sort of odor Initially, it was orange juice type of smell, but it changed later to something else. It's nothing that you would smell in a hospital, though, although there could be a little bit of an undertone of that sort of smell. Then my sister would have markings on her. I would. That's how. That's how we we basically started investigating this under our, you know, um, from her experience as well. Uh, yeah, markings on her more than they, they were on me. I'd say it's different 
than having an extraterrestrial abduction. It's, it's, you, you can't compare the two with each other at all. One is much more um, subtle in the way that they come to get you, uh, uh, hijacking your dreams, hijacking you in an astral plane as you start to fall asleep. I had a experience with a gray, um, small gray uh, uh, Zeta reticuli, I believe. And they basically, there were five of them and they came into my room. I woke up, saw them over me and they pinned me down and they were trying to put some sort of implant inside of my uh, hit my skull, the back of my head. Um, I managed to get them away eventually after the struggle. I wasn't very sure whether it was, you know, where, you know, you sort of have a vague feeling that it could be there, but you're not sure. Um, yeah, I managed to get them away from me. Okay. That was uh, a... Uh, training and this kind of abduction takes place partially in the dreams like yes training in the dreams and partially in the physical yes yes yes, yes correct uh, so you were taken from your home when you were asleep and then put back to your bed yes uh, that way and also uh, they try to, with more emphasis on sort of upgrading their program by uh, changing the scenery rather than to remove me physically, they would also, uh, you know, I don't know how to explain it. It's as if you're having, like I said, a lucid dream. You're sort of awake, but you're not awake. You're dreaming, but you're not dreaming as if you're having a meditation moment, that's when they get you. You sort of don't have that much control, but you can if you really work hard on yourself, if you discipline yourself. Um, I only know of, I'm aware rather, of uh, perhaps three times of being physically affected where I felt something was different. Um, after that, they moved to working on the astral um, realm. I think that it was just maybe I was just too too difficult to manage or whatever. My sister has uh, had physical experiences. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, and now you you are taken also to this underground base. Pretoria. Yeah. What was it inside? What did it look like? Okay. Okay. First of all, it was underneath an old aircraft carrier place. Uh, it used to be an aircraft where, where, where the aircraft used to land. So it's an abandoned aircraft uh, carrier base. Um, I know it because I I could I was aware that I could see I could see signage that said it was there. I also saw that when you go into this massive uh, hangar, you would go in and you would suddenly go down into however many layers that would go straight down to. I don't I wasn't aware of how many layers we went down, but we went down in a lift. Um, the it looks like a massive parking lot with no cars in it. It's really odd. It's like this makeshift sort of, uh, um, uh, you know, canvas things standing all over there. There were military and uh, outfit people with military outfits. There were people with white uh, uh, lab coats. Um, dim lights, a very crudely set up sort of um, thing, almost like they would get it and go and then move away, you know, so it wasn't like it was, a, there weren't permanent fixtures there. 
um, there was definitely the sound of a generator. So my sense was telling me that it was artificially held for the specific task, um, sort of, you know, and I could hear the accent of the people and uh, I know what uh, Pretoria looks like. So it's very flat. There are no mountains, I mean, not ma mountains, just little hills. So that was my instinct was telling me that that's where that was. And I was actually trying to research it in my waking state um, through Google Maps and so on. But I couldn't really, to be honest with you, I didn't really pursue it any further. I just lost, lost sort of interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, inside, on the ground, uh, there were rooms. Corridors. Yeah, uh, these rooms were not permanent. They were sort of, um, yes, yes, they were like, uh, yeah, cubicles, very crudely put together. Like, um, I'm trying to find the word to explain to you uh, what these things were made up, sort of like cardboard, but hard, what do you call it? Um, uh, some had curtains, frames that were just very crudely put there just to make a cubicle just for this, you know, okay. beds. So uh, let's say just example of one time you went there and uh, what did they do to you? Some kind of... Okay, they, they, they made me sit in... Uh, on a chair with uh, others. We were all sitting in chairs uh, with our backs against the walls, with a wall, a uh, prefab um, sort of wall. And we were called uh, with numbers. And uh, uh, they would sit there, we would have checkup, a checkup, a physical checkup, would check your ears, eyes. Um, and then they would uh, make sure that you were okay and then you would go to the next cubicle and sit there and wait and then there would be others who would come in other uh, officers would come in and then they would take certain ones out of the groups and they would um, get us to do training uh, they would also give us things to read um, there wasn't any physically forced strapped into chairs or anything, nothing like that. It's as if it was voluntary and yet, you know, it's as if they've upgraded their, their, their skills of um, working with, with um, uh, us. So they, there was no force. It was just, you know, move the sheep along sort of behavior with us. Uh, I experienced training. I was given training. Um, military training. Uh, plans were given to us uh, that at a later stage we will know that you'll be triggered. You'll be know. Uh, you'll be. You'll know when to uh, respond or to work on this subject or this topic or whatever it is. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, one thing. Military training takes weeks or months so you were there physically so long I, or every night you were taken there every night and also if there was one that had experienced that when they were little they didn't need as much training as the other ones um, it's as if it was already cemented in um, from what I remember and what I felt I could remember from my dreams was that I've had this military experience for as long as I, I as if I've remembered myself from little to adulthood. Um, and it's as if I was getting a brush up on skills, you know, and up, upgrades and whatever you want to call it. It means that uh, somehow you were implanted with this knowledge and skills. Yes, yes. That, that would be definitely it, because later on I had dreams of the future as well. So I then realized that I was involved in timeline work. Um, and one more thing about 
free will. Uh, didn't you have any kind of question uh, when you were there? At what point I agreed to be here to undergo this everything? Or uh, there was no such question in, you, in, in other guys also? I only started questioning in my adulthood when I, a f few years ago, I only started questioning because I was led to believe that it was supposed to be right because we were, in my household, how we grew up, there was that already there, that sort of, um, you know, do this because this is for the greater good or do this, you know, or do that. Um, so it felt as if it was natural, you know, and only later did I realize, actually, you know what, you know, I could have said no, I could have said up yours or whatever, you know, and, well, it actually did start to happen like that, so, yeah. Uh, okay, and uh, so, so let's jump to uh, some other topics. Teleportation. Okay. Training of teleportation, or you use some technology? How was it? Okay, um, the teleportation thing. Uh, some of my sister can teleport. I can teleport. I don't know if anybody else can. Um, it's a as if it was a natural skill that was harnessed. Uh, and the way that it would happen is um, you would sort of, they, they must have known that that we were we had gifts because I, I was always led to believe that uh, I could do certain things when I was a lot younger. Um, so it felt as if my skills, my gifts were manipulated. Um, I could naturally just go anywhere in the world by just focusing on that place and I'd be there. Mentally, uh, not physically. Mentally. Uh, mentally, yes, yes. Later, physically, in my dreams, uh, I could sometimes be somewhere and then I would not be able to keep it long enough and I would have to come back. Um, I, we tested it with each other, my sister and I tested it a lot. Um, sometimes people could smell that I I would have a cigarette. They would smell that I was right there, right now. Um, but that's that's kind of moved. I've moved away from that. It's a bit <laughs> it's a bit hard <laughs> now. And you use this skill for espionage, or uh... well, that was what was the problem. Yes. It was what I noticed that, oh my gosh, okay, I'm sort of my, I'm being, I had that experience, espionage, where I was sent to go to Europe to go and do certain things. Um, and uh, I would just be there in the middle of the street. I know that I physically had just shot that man and it really worried me that I couldn't feel that I could stop that. It was as if it was involuntary, you know, uh, sort of a emotional, it's as if it happened automatically without me being able to stop that um, process. So, people so that's how I... Are you appearing somewhere? Yes, appearing there. Yes, shocked me that I would be there. I, I would, I'm there, I'm in, I'm in Japan right now and I'm doing this, I'm going to shoot this man, there I am, waiting for him at that specific time, it happens, and suddenly I'm gone, I'm back, and I recall this through my dream a day later, uh, messing with the time, you know, um, that's just one of the things that have, that's happened, you know, uh, luckily my friends don't think I'm nuts, because I've told them about these experiences, you know, uh, yeah, and so, but, but you remember that a day later because of uh, uh, blank slating or because this uh, 
happens this way, always? Uh, yeah, it always happened this way. Um, I think that when I was a lot younger, it wasn't used, it wasn't activated, it wasn't um, manipulated as such. But as I got older, like in my adulthood, uh, my awareness of it was as if I was partly blocked from knowing. Um, it made me very angry. So I was working very uh, yeah, um, hard to try and stop it from happening. You did a lot of meditation or uh, some other way? Yes. Yes, um, and uh, saying things to uh, get myself out of that state um, using uh, electromagnetic energy and placing um, shields over us to protect us so that I don't, um, so that I can actually sleep properly, you know. Are you still being used by them or you are free? Well, this is the strangest thing. Um, I thought that I was okay for quite some time until one about a week ago. I had a, a experience where I was sent again somewhere in some building to go and dismantle a computer hard drive of some sort to remove a specific chip or part out of it. And there was someone with me who was um, doing the security detail to protect me while I was doing this. I had to go there, steal this chip, and I was very peeved. I was very upset because I thought I was finished with this. Um, yeah, that was quite... Uh, yeah, something that bothered me now, so that's why, yeah. You couldn't decide what was going on? Yeah. No, um, initially, like I wrote it down to try and understand whether it was actually just a dream or whether it really happened, but I felt the next morning how I would normally feel if I've done something like this. You know, you feel as if you've had a, you've had no sleep, but you know you, you're, you're, very tired. Your eyes are wide open, but you're dead tired. You know, that sort of like out of rhythm feeling. Um, and I thought it had to, so I was watching the news to see what's going on. Something happened for this to happen. All I know is that it had something to do with specifically this chip that had to do with the internet. So I forced myself to have, uh, uh, um, through meditation uh, a dream to see w what was this about and um, I left some clues for myself in this dream that I recalled that experience and uh, I had made some drawings on a piece of paper in my dream and uh, that led me to see oh, okay this is about the something to do with the internet that's uh, connecting everybody together on this world. So someone wants the specific thing that can actually help to keep the negative agenda going. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's as far as I got now. It's a few days now. Mm -hmm. And uh, who, is, who is they? Who are those who control you? Well, they are a multiple bunch of people who are very ego-driven and very controlling and very arrogant, um, multiracial, multi, uh, mainly human. That's what's so shocking, mainly human. Um, uh, the percentage in terms of extraterrestrial is smaller, more human. And uh, I thought that uh, I knew who they all were. They they have so many names. They probably, they can be called Illuminati, Illuminated Ones, or 
uh, the illumination or the whatever the Sefirian agenda. Those are just names for bad people who have lots of money, who don't have anything else to do other than to go on this ego trip to keep people under control because they that's what you do if you don't if you have too much time on your hands. The Fourth Reich, I believe, is something to do with regards to the rising of a new agenda to keep people in the same sort of suppressed state. Uh, I was led to believe at some stage in my life that um, they were initially taking over from the third Reich, they've they've moved they've basically upgraded themselves to the fourth risen ones, which I was also told they were called the fourth risen sons. Uh extraterrestrials told me, um uh, beings told me this. I've had uh, um reptilians come to tell me that these are the new fourth risen um sons. And uh, and uh, they basically are working on their own sort of little agenda. They they haven't um, done anything specifically too extreme at the moment because there's a timeline that they're working in, and the timeline is not the right timeline. This one is not right for them to do so because it's a short period of their reign, so they would like to extend it by using another timeline, which they're working to try and start up. But uh, so many of these um, other lower key players that have been trying to um, get to their side because they're afraid uh, of being um, trapped or triggered or, um, you know, taken out of, you know, so they've kind of snuck over to the enemy's line, hide there with these guys. Um, they're not just on the moon. They are mainly here. This is where the action is. It's easier to manage things from this place, from this earth, than from pretty much outside. They do have a small base there, though. Um, what kind of devices do they use for switching to the timelines, or the, the timelines, the global timelines. Is it uh, like CERN or something similar? Part of it, yes. Uh, I've had, uh, again, people coming to tell me, beings come to tell me uh, that uh, they've used uh, the energy that comes off of CERN to... It's as if they, I'm trying to think how I wrote it down, um, that the earth is basically uh, sort of splitting into two parts, but one is holographic um, and the other is actual, this is where we are, and the other side is around it. Um, sort of like a yin-yang sign, if you would, you know, you would that side, sort of, but the one side is, is like a forming another earth timeline. This instrument that they're using is is something that looks like it could be from Tesla. Uh, I was given an image that it was something that looked like a, a cylinder with magnetic energy around it. So when CERN starts and it basically runs through a supercomputer, which sends out the satellites out of on the outside of the planet, outside of Earth, and um, they basically connect with that signal. So whenever this thing starts up, they start it, it starts up their machine on that side. Uh, CERN is actually damaging the core of um, this Earth, as we're speaking, um, by creating a, f uh, a shift in the in the magnetic energy that's holding it together. So it's it's as if milk. It's like milk curdling. It's like it's busy doing that with the timeline. That's what's happening. So they basically, 
focus on it with their device and they pick up whatever time they want to be in. Not the right time yet, apparently, for them. Um, they're not so involved as as people think. They're not really that involved right now. They're probably more focused on trying to get us back into the past. Uh, I feel 75 years back. They want to go that far back to restart. There's so many other beings and people and, and organizations that want to keep it in this timeline. So there's this uh, fighting and, you know, conflicting behavior. So they, you know. CERN kind of had a major failure last year. In autumn, it blew up. I feel familiar with that, yes. I think if I could comment on that with regards to who I think did it, I think it messed up. I think it was the uh, those guys outside because of the interference. Whenever these people, little people here, switch it on, it messes with their timelines. So it would be easy just to switch it off because it's the same as uh, – it's this massive – a uh, server that is uh, consists out of the internet that's basically on the earth. Uh, it's connected to this server, or it's called a server in human in human terms. It would be called that, um, and it's very easy to interfere with something somewhere. If you really want to switch off the server, you could just sort out a certain. Um, other smaller servers, uh, like, for example, CERN. Does this make does this make sense? What I'm explaining because I'm thinking as I'm busy telling you from what what I was given. So, sorry if I sound a bit. Uh, okay, uh, Simon Parks explains that this failure happened because uh, the Earth expanding itself it created uh, thunderstorm and this thunderstorm um, hit our plant and it destroyed a lot of their devices. I feel that could be, yes, I agree. Whatever it takes to um, to stop something, if you're, de if you're desperate, yeah, I believe so. Okay. Uh, what kind of warfare activities were in the world? Um, okay. Uh, Single missions or uh, major events? Okay, major events, yes, and single missions. Um, there was uh, definitely interference with uh, John F. Kennedy. I was a driver and uh, I was taking him to the airport to or to this place where he was going to get assassinated and, and he was trying to tell me that this was, was was what was going to happen. I remember the interior of the car seats. I remember that the car was very um, armor-pierced as well. And um, I know that I was trying to stop. I was taking forever to get to where he was supposed to go because he was busy talking to me. That was a time jump, timeline mission that happened while I was in this timeline. Okay. You were his driver in that car? In that car, yes. That, that man was taken over like his yes. soul was removed and replaced with yours? I would say so, yes, but not entirely. Uh, it's as if they had made uh, some people have certain choices that they make where they allow this to happen if they want to make a change. And at that point in time, they just allow that to happen. They don't know when, they don't want to know when. Um, and when that jump takes place into that person's consciousness, they're allowing me to do that, to stop that, to slow down or to find the information or whatever. That's how 
my timeline jumping happened and happens. My missions happen like that. Do you know any more details about these assassinations? assassinations? Yes, yes, uh, I do. Uh, I, I also recall that the person that was um, going to take them out, or persons, um, not person, uh, they were basically told to execute the target, and I could hear it. Uh, I n did not see where the shot came from, but I was supposed to let, to gather the information from him before he was going to be taken out, and he knew it. He knew that he was going to be taken out. His wife was not present at that time. It was only, I was not in that parade where that took place. I was driving him to get to the parade, and then he would meet his wife at a, there. That's what I recall of what happened. Um, uh, why hmm. couldn't he change the situation? Because he knew about that. So it was like decision from the higher realm? Uh, uh, well, basically what I felt was he could have. He could have told me, stop right there. But when you're so scared, I think all he kept saying to me, and I could smell his body odor as well. He was saying to me, son, it's too late. Son, it's too late. That's what he said to me. And so I said, well, tell me, what is there? What can we do? And he said, and he told me about all of these things that were going to happen. Um, I can't access it. I can just tell you that something happened in Mexico. Something happened with the uh, organizations there. Um, I can't say more because I can't recall. It. There's a bit of a block there. If I had to sit in, I would probably be able to get it if I had to focus really hard on it. I was also, sorry? Some other example in the history. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Vietnam as well. The um, just being part of the, there was one specific person that wasn't supposed to get killed. I managed to stop that from happening. It was one of the Vietnamese uh, um, uh, soldiers because he was going to have a child later who would be very important for the for Vietnam uh, grandchild or whatever you want to call it. The, that bloodline had to be saved, so I I helped him escape from there. My uh, siblings were involved in that timeline as well with me. Um, then further, it, there's a lot of timelines where things happen very far back into the into the past, in the beginnings of the Earth, of the events that took place, and then things that are happening that have happened now, the sort of present timeline of uh, this current uh, yeah, if, if this current timeline, single missions in this current timeline. Uh, execute this banker from this country uh, at that time, specifically on the dot. Go to, go to Russia, go and take out five men. Go to Italy, go and take out this man at this place. This time, that's what happened. Those were the specific missions that took place. And then, of course, uh, yeah, then there was sort of a break in between. I think this was that was when I was working very hard to, to change my life. So it felt quiet after that. I, I thought I could um, stop that, you know. Missions, you have different bodies? Yes. Yeah. Uh, male, yes, sometimes female. Uh, mostly male because apparently it was they could get the job done quicker. Those were the words that were given to me. So it's. And just for that minute, for that time when that event takes place. Okay. Uh, 
chronologically uh, the oldest jump, I mean the furthest jump back to the history okay. era. What was that? The German war, the war. Uh, the the German war, the first one or the second one, to do with trying to change the time, change it so that it could have a different outcome. It failed. It was repeatedly done to try and change it. It failed. Um, the last that it happened was uh, to do with uh, uh, Hitler, okay, um, and he didn't die. He, I believe, the information has come out now that he that they found he's that he lived in Brazil or somewhere. Argentina. Argentina. I've known about that for longer than this information that they've found. Yes. I've. I was there to make sure, yes. Uh, it wasn't even the same guy that did all of the stuff. There was definitely a double. He had more than just a double. He had about four guys that were doing his thing for him. The one that got away was called Adolf Skreyer. That was what he was called. Uh, his surname, I don't know. If you, yeah, I guess Hitler. But he did look like him help him to get his passport and all of the stuff out. Uh, there was a, a German a specific officer that I was supposed to take out to kill, to stop him, so that it would change the timeline forever. And I, and I, I couldn't find the guy. It was as if there was something that was stopping me from doing it, as if there were others... They were trying to stop me from doing this. I uh, failed. Uh, I wouldn't. Do you remember? The guy's name, Fritz, something Fritz, but I can't remember anything else. Just the name Fritz. That's all. Uh, tall, long face, uh, reddish hair, blonde reddish hair. I, that's, that's it. Um, I failed. Couldn't take him out. So, Hitler, how many days before the official suicide, he was taken away from there? Almost two weeks. Huh? Almost two weeks, because it was long enough to get away, to make to plot all the stuff. His own people didn't even know. Mm -hmm. But it was just, yeah. So, his own people didn't know the real Hitler? No. I, I, I remember that I met this man. He was a, a very quiet, calm, uh, shy, introvert person. He was very scrawny. He had a, a, an, a, a physical condition. Uh, his uh, body odor was weird, so I later learned that it was actually a nervous condition of the liver or something like that. Um, and I met him in a pub, and uh, I discussed with him information, and he was willing to do this, and then I don't remember, then it's gone. Memory is gone from that specific event. Then I remember again seeing him again. He has no idea what I look like. I know that I'm obviously in another body, so he would not know. Um, but it shows you something about the soul that picks up on another person's soul, that it's very, that there's a frequency. So he, he started to become friends with me. Then memory cut. Then handing over passports to another man in at a at an uh, air base and the sky is going in through the carrier side of this plane um, and not through a boat not through a, not through a submarine but by air uh, 
and giving him his passport, the leather bind of this passport with on uh, on him on his person, give it to him back and say, "Have a good one uh, in German and uh, memory cut. Yeah, that's how that's what's that's what's been going on. But I do know that I missed one specific opportunity to take out this one person and I couldn't find him. I couldn't kill him because I couldn't find him because there were so many things happening. There was, it was as if my psyche was being messed with. So I think I was being attacked by another, perhaps another uh, soldier who was trying to block me from doing this or could be extraterrestrial. And this, this flight, this airplane, uh, what was the destination of the flight with Hitler? To get him out of the country. Okay, where? A place with lots of trees and where it was hot. That was what the description was. So yes, I'm assuming Argentina. Yeah, but uh, there were no so, uh, so... They were delivering things. There were things going in that. It was like a cargo ship, uh, a cargo... Airplane. Uh, plane, yes. There were things going in there. There was something like a piano that was going in there as well. A massive box with a piano inside. Um, something from Vienna that went on that uh, plane as well. Um, and that that way it was easy to just go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's jump to, to Mars. What do you know about okay. the basis on Mars? Okay, what I know about Mars is that is the information before while the when I was on Mars, I was there uh, visiting while the Earth was being populated. That's how long ago I was on Mars. And there was peace. There was a loving play there were a lot of loving beings there. They did not look like Martians. They looked humanoid, um, dark skin, dark skin, uh, almost African type being people, not warring, very quiet, very respectful, and you could breathe there. And I, I'm not aware that I don't think I was in human form there. I believe that I was there in an extraterrestrial form. So it was accommodating for myself as whatever species I was to be there. And I was basically there to oversee how things were going and to sort of do a round to see if it was okay and everything was okay. And so we went, so I went back. That's, that's how long ago I've been there while the earth was being populated and while the human or uh, yeah the human project was being was taking place when was that can you specify or it's impossible i can't tell you the time because i i i would not be accurate perhaps if i had say if i would say so i can just only say that it was uh before dinosaur time so yeah, I guess long before that even. The Earth's continents were still together, so Pangaea all together. The, it was taking place in the Orion constellation where there were many uh, other groups of, of beings that came together to decide after a long struggle that maybe they should all put a part of themselves inside this uh, new... Um, project called Anuman or Anhuman or Anuman or however you want to call it because uh, maybe the, the way that I pronounce it is perhaps wrong but um, that was what it was known as or Adam or somewhat, something like that and I remember being part of uh, I was part of a race that was working with the Orion elders okay this memory comes from the earlier 
This was a memory from an earlier, earlier incarnation. So what else do you know about this project, Project Anuman? This project was spe specifically meant to bring a sort of a peace to this world, as if initially the Orion elders wanted to have something to look forward to when they retire. That's how it was announced and uh, everybody should everybody wants to be part of this you know this thing you know donate some of your DNA let's all put it together in this pot and let's you know celebrate this whole little you know creation and it was wonderful and there was an awareness of a source being or a source and uh, there was also then suddenly a time where the Orion elders had to step down and they said to me, okay, since you're not really our child, but you're our adopted child, um, you will now have to work with our sons and daughters who are the Orion children, the second generation Orion beings. And that's where everything just went upside down um, because that's where greed came in and uh, exploitation took place and uh, they should rather be slaves, you know, and that sort of nonsense. Unfortunately, that sort of uh, state of uh, consciousness was uh, put into the creation, into human, in, into the existence of humanity. It's almost as if they could feel that they are born with low self esteem. And that's basically because they feel unloved by their parents. Uh, I believe humans suffer deep down on the core level uh, uh, that they feel unloved and they feel abandoned and that's why they feel that they can't live up to anything more or better or whatever. I'm not saying everybody is like this. I'm just saying that that's the overall general sort of um, experience that I think is around uh, in humanity at the moment. Yes. 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 So what is the method of overimposing this illusion, this maya on people? The way that it's held in place is by fixing on that which is perceived as a weakness. In other words, emotion, emotion and feelings are exploited. Um, it's constantly working on the heart consciousness and suppressing the heart emotional, the heart energy, which is actually, it has... Everything that's inside of the body is inside of the heart. Um, that's the problem, according to them. Um, if you can... According to them, according to those creators, according to those who create the human? No. Let me put it this way. The Orion children, the second generation Orions, did not create humans, the, the elders did, and these children exploited their parents, okay. inherited their plans mm -hmm. by, it's as if um, my father leaves to me his land, and I'm angry with my father, so I don't do nothing with the land, I damage the land, mm -hmm. because I'm angry with my father. And this land stays there and becomes whatever, bitter and whatever. Um, I believe that the ones that are exploiting the humans, the humans that are exploiting humans, I believe that they are the, there's a, it's not just a little handful or the top of the pyramid that's doing this. It's everybody doing it to everybody in some way, which is really, what really sad. Um, can you explain what 
is the relationship between those Orion elders and Anunnaki here. I, I understand that the time time difference is very huge. You said like millions of years, and the Anunnaki were thousands of years. Yes. Is yes, correct. It's yes. There's there's no there's no, um, no connection. Okay. No, the Orion elders would be. If I were to explain to you in, ti in, in terms of, it would be looking at something that does not need, did not need to have a, a shape or a form to show who they are, who they were, but you could feel there's a father, you could feel there's a mother, you could feel there's that of them. And their children were probably, I would say the Anunnaki would be the grandchildren of the second generation Orion, or their children. It could be their children, yes. Okay, so uh, do you know anything about the Anunnaki? Anything like in detail? What they did here? I do know that the story that I recall from my experience in remembering was that all of us came to the earth at, at numerous times. There wasn't a specific time that everybody that, that we came through here or that uh, I do know that some of us came and went back. Some stayed behind. Some never came back. Uh, so there was this, con there was this, I believe that the term was given to the visitors that came here. I do not believe that um, it was this race, specific one kind of race that came here that did all of this. I believe that, as I recall, that it was as if many kinds came here and wherever they came, that's where they either stayed or they, ma or they uh, mated with the, the folks here, and that was that. Um, the agenda was more outside of the earth in terms of the war that broke up, that broke out when the children, the second generation Orions, revolted against their parents, their fathers. Uh, did that? Did that come out right? Sorry to explain. Um, may May I explain? Um, okay, the older generation, the, the first generation old Orion beings, uh, when they stepped down, their children took over and they were not happy with what was left for them to look after, to care for, to nurture, and they became embittered. It's the, the state of where there's this... I think the Bible has kind of wasn't written very clearly with the explanation of um, being unhappy with, you know, why do you, why did you care so much about them, you know, when we're so much more superior than them? Why are they your favorite? Sort of thing. That was the human emotional interpretation I would give, I would explain, and that upset many others in that constellation because it was as if their DNA was insulted by these because everybody put their DNA into this big dish. Mm -hmm. How many of them? The container. Sorry? How many of them? How many um, races? A, a lot. I can't explain, but I do know that there were five specific ones, main ones, um, there were others that gave smaller parts, smaller um, DNA. There was also three types of human beings before the, the initial settled upon one that worked. The first one was very docile, very weak, and uh, it had a base in its DNA that was Lemurian. Lemurian. And... Um, it was not very strong to defend itself against the elements of, of, of the world, the nature. 
and then the second one, which was a transition of the first one, and that did not work so well either, excuse me, because that was just too aggressive. And then the third one, which is how I would say modern man now perhaps would probably look like from what I can remember. I know that I was involved in all of that. Not the actual experimentation of it, but I was aware of it and I was seeing how this was taking place. Um, okay, and I kind of digressed from what you were asking me. I apologize. Um, how many races? As far as I oh, remember, fine. There were 13 of them. <clears throat> Okay, I know that there were five that gave the five shape, the symbol for the hand. Each finger or digit of the hand would represent the race that gave the most um, DNA in terms of the basis of the human being. But yes, I would, I would probably, uh, uh, if there was 13, yes, okay. Um, smaller parts, perhaps. Other parts of the body, uh, I'm just speaking from what I remember. I do know that there were five, five main ones, though. Okay, what about the reptilians? Uh, what, uh, what part from them? I definitely that brain, the brain part that, uh, yeah, brain stem, yes, brain stem, but not from. You see, this is what's so, again, um, it assists in the self-defense of how to protect yourself. If that part was trained correctly, it would serve rather than destroy. Um, it's the same as uh, knowing that your ego is there and you would have to care for it, but you don't have to feed it. If you follow what I'm saying, it's uh, you can't cut off a part of yourself if you don't like it. I mean, you would look rather stupid. <laughs> okay, uh, we still have a lot of uh, topics, so let's make yeah. the first part and we'll continue okay. with the second. Okay, okay. Well, that's great. <laughs> 